There are a lot of amazing things in the world, and even if you think you've seen it all, some things are still bound to surprise you. In this video, I'll show you some of the most mind-boggling clips on the internet, as well as interesting bits of history that you won't believe actually happened. From the amazing Cranberry Bog, to the hungriest man in the world, Tarar, here are 15 things that will make you say wow. Number 15. Cranberry Bog One of the most fascinating things in the world is watching how our food and drinks are produced before they're placed in grocery stores. If you're a fan of television, then you've probably seen a cranberry bog in commercials. It's probably confusing to see farmers wading around in waist-deep water filled with cranberries, but it's actually a part of harvesting them. It all starts with a soft marshy ground, as well as acidic peaty soil, which is the perfect environment to grow cranberries. You can find them all over North and South America, primarily in the Pacific Northwest region, which includes Oregon, Washington, and British Columbia. So do cranberries grow underwater? Not really. The fields are only flooded during three phases of the fruit's growth, first during the winter, then the spring. And finally, the field is flooded again when the fruit is mature and red. A machine will pull up the cranberries to make them float, which results in this massive pool of berries. It looks fun, doesn't it? Once all of the cranberries are taken off the vines, they'll be corralled together and loaded into trucks. After that, they'll be shipped off to factories that make the products that fill the supermarkets. And that's basically how you get your favorite cranberry drink. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. Number 14. Danakil Depression I know this looks like an alien planet or a scene from a sci-fi movie, but this is an actual place on Earth. This is the Danakil Depression, also known as the Gateway to Hell. This is one of the most alien places on the planet, and quite frankly, not a lot of organisms choose to live here. The Danakil Depression is located in Ethiopia, and for the most part, only three types of people dare to venture in this harsh environment. Tourists, researchers, and the locals. This place is one of the hottest places on Earth, and one of the lowest, being over 400 feet below sea level. The locals usually go here to get salt from the deposits, while scientists see this place as a haven for experimentation and research. After all, there's much to learn about the organisms that manage to survive in this hot and inhospitable location. The water here is extremely acidic, and toxic gases are sometimes released from craters. And yet, amazingly enough, life still manages to thrive. These organisms, called extremophiles, are creatures that manage to live even in the most uninhabitable environment. If you're one for adventure, then you might want to add the Danakil Depression to your travel bucket list. Number 13. Firefalls did you know that there's a firefall in the United States? This is the Yosemite Firefall. Here, the water running down the top of Glacier Point in Yosemite National Park looks like burning flames or flowing lava instead of water. It's pretty amazing to watch. Every year, thousands of tourists flock to the National Park in February just to see it. The firefall has a 3,000 feet drop, and it's mesmerizing to observe, even from a distance. So what exactly is the firefall? Does the water actually turn into fire? The short answer is no. For a firefall to happen, the right condition has to be met first. The weather, time, and the sun's position are important. The quality of the firefall you'll witness depends on how lucky you are. Many people have gone to the national park with their fingers crossed, hoping and praying that they'll get to see the legendary firefall. As long as the sunlight strikes horsetail fall, you'll get the chance to witness this amazing sight. However, from 1872 to 1968, the firefall was an actual event that occurred when burning wood was pushed from the top of Glacier Point to give an appearance of a firefall. It's long been stopped because according to authorities, it was a man-made phenomena and not natural. Today, the firefall kept its name to pay homage to the original event. Number 12. Koi and Drainage Canal In the city, drainage canals are often smelly and incredibly dirty. Many people don't really like being near them, and for good reason. The only thing you'll see in drainage canals are filth, dirty water, and the occasional insects, worms, and rodents. However, the drainage in the city of Shimabara on Japan's Kyushu Island is quite different. The water in these canals is so clean that hundreds of koi carp thrive in them. This is one of the reasons why Japan can be pretty amazing. I mean, where else in the world would you see fish thriving in the canals? But you're probably wondering how these fish got in the drainage in the first place. It all started in 1792 when Mount Unzen triggered an earthquake and tsunami that killed over 10,000 people. It was a catastrophic disaster. 
but it also created an abundance of freshwater springs in the area. As a result, clean water began to flow through the city's drainage canals. The officials then thought it would be a great idea to release fish into the 100-meter-long canals, and the koi remain in the waterways to this day. It might sound easy, but it requires a lot of work to maintain the water in the drainage. The koi in the canals will remain alive as long as the locals as well as the many tourists continue to work together and keep the environment clean. I think taking care of koi carp was a really smart move. First of all, the fresh water in the drainage canal had a purpose. And second of all, the city became known all over the world, which helped them attract tourists. Finally, the presence of koi is like a reminder for everyone to take responsibility and care for their surroundings. Number 11. Flashlight Fish If you're into taking care of fish, then you might already know about these creatures. They might look like CGI, but these fish are very real. They're called flashlight fish, and the reason behind their name is quite obvious. These wonderful marine creatures live in the Indo-Pacific Ocean and the Caribbean Sea, but some people try to take care of them as pets. In the dark, these fish look like they have glowing eyes, making them look a bit cartoonish. But the two glowing shapes on their face are actually light organs that they can flicker on and off, just like a flashlight to detect prey in dark waters. In the ocean, these fish are nocturnal and are only active at night. These fish spend most of their time during the day hidden in caves or holes in the reef. In case you're wondering why you've only heard about these creatures now, it's most likely because they're incredibly rare. There's also the chance that you've already seen one without knowing. After all, they look like normal fish during the daytime. Number 10. Face Changing Try not to blink your eyes, or else you'll miss the transition between the many faces of these performers. This is the secret art of Bian Lian, or face changing. Bian Lian, or Two-Faced, is a unique aspect of Sichuan Opera, which dates back to the 1700s. It's amazing to see these performers change their faces with just a wave of a hand, or by simply turning around. Everything happens in a split second, so you don't even have time to process what they did exactly. In fact, they can change up to 10 masks in less than 20 seconds. For many years, the way this performance was done remained a top secret. No one was allowed to divulge how it was done to the public. And in the past, the techniques were only passed down to generations within the same family. It's quite different today because anyone can learn by attending the Sichuan Opera School, but students there are still required to promise never to reveal the secret of Bian Lian. Sometimes students are even asked to sign a contract to make sure that they'll never tell the public how this art is produced. So far, only around 200 people in China know how to pull off this trick, with each one of them mastering the art in less than two years. Number 9. In Nakadade Landscape Art You might think that this picture is edited, but it's not. This is the amazing landscape art of Inakadadate, and it's incredibly unbelievable. Inakadadate is a tiny village located in Aomori at the north end of the Honshu mainland of Japan. For years, the people in this village made a living by farming. However, as years passed by, the population in the village decreased and slowly garnered debt. Luckily, they found a new way to give life to their small village, rice paddy art. Hundreds of volunteers carefully planted these shoots to create a huge living canvas. A different scene is portrayed in the rice paddies each year, and you can tell that a lot of effort goes into making each one. Because of the rice paddy art, the quiet village soon became filled with tourists eager to see the rice fields. Just imagine, drawing on paper is hard enough, so making a painting with such detail with a rice field is an amazing feat. Number 8. Bioluminescence let me introduce you to the wonders of bioluminescence. If you haven't seen blue waves lighting up in the dark, you can't really say that you haven't already appreciated everything the ocean has to offer. This is the power of bioluminescence. This phenomenon occurs when the ocean glows in neon blue or green, and sometimes even red. But how exactly does this happen? These lights are the product of a natural chemical process called bioluminescence. It might be hard to believe, but the creatures in the ocean are the ones creating this beautiful natural glow. Fish, squid, and algae all produce bioluminescence for many things, including catching food, attracting mates, and confusing their predators. I know that it's stunning to see in this video, but it's even more impressive to witness in person. After all, these glowing ocean waves are a part of nature's show. Number 7. Diamond Rain Diamonds are extremely precious stones that cost a lot. The most expensive of them go for over a hundred million dollars, and many people in the world risk their lives just to get more of them. As they say, diamonds are forever. 
But did you know that there's one place where diamonds literally fall from the sky? Diamonds that are big enough to be worn as precious necklaces rain down on Saturn and Jupiter. On these planets, lightning storms turn methane into soot, which later on falls down as chunks of graphite and then diamond. However, they don't stay in that form for long, because they eventually melt into liquid. Each year, 1,000 tons of diamonds are produced on Saturn, and it's only possible because of the planet's combination of methane gas and storm activity. It's crazy to imagine that such planets exist in our solar system. It's better for us to just mine these precious materials, though. There might be diamonds on Saturn, but all of those precious stones wouldn't be able to sustain life. Number 6. Hydrophobic Materials Are you tired of cleaning stains on your white shirt? Well, you might be happy to learn about hydrophobic materials. Literally meaning water-hating, hydrophobic materials are things that hate water. This means that they're extremely waterproof, and it's almost impossible to get them wet. For many of us, it probably sounds like a dream to never have to worry about stains. As you can see here, the hydrophobic material will make sure that even if you accidentally spill soy sauce, wine, or soda on your clothes, it won't affect the fabric at all. This is the power of years of research in hydrophobic nanotechnology. Number 5. Daylight Fireworks One of the most popular ways to end or start a celebration during the night is by setting off fireworks. These colorful displays are incredibly beautiful to look at, especially in the night sky. However, did you know that there are now daylight fireworks? You don't need to wait for the sun to disappear from the sky to enjoy bursts of color. They start off as tiny puffs of black and grayish smoke, but later on explode into a huge spray of colors. They're really amazing to look at, and in my opinion, I think I like daylight fireworks better than the usual ones. Just imagine setting these off while waiting for the sun to set. Sounds like the perfect way to end a celebration. And now, it's time for today's topic. Don't say wow while watching this video, or rather, don't say ouch. At first glance, you might think that a black insect invaded this guy's finger, but this is actually a blood blister. It happens when a blister gets filled with blood instead of clear liquid. They can be red, purple, or black in appearance, and they're commonly found on the hands, fingers, feet, and toes. They're typically less painful than they look, but they're uncomfortable to have. They usually go away on their own, but in this case, too much blood accumulated inside. When it gets to this point, usually doctors use a sterilized needle to solve the problem. But this man decided to take care of it himself and pop it. This might have been pretty painful to watch, but it's still low-key amazing nonetheless. What do you think? As always, comment down below with the hashtag today's topic and let us know your opinion about what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 4. Wojtek the Bear Did you know that during the Second World War, a bear helped the Polish army to win battles? I know, it sounds a little crazy, but it's true. This is Wojtek the Bear. He was a 600-pound brown bear that was adopted by the 22nd Transport Company's artillery division in the Polish Second Corps. However, he wasn't really there for his strength. Instead, he was with the army to give them a morale boost during the war. It was pretty common for units to have animal mascots, but Wojtek was a special one. The Polish troops accepted the bear as one of their own. During his stay with the troops, he was fed marmalade, fruit, syrup, condensed milk, as well as honey. He participated in wrestling and soccer matches with them. He also knew how to salute and how to give the new recruits the scare of a lifetime by holding them upside down. And like all of our animal companions, Wojtek had a talent for making trouble for his human friends. During one Christmas, the brown bear snuck into the storage and ate most of the food. Later on, he also learned how to turn on the communal showers, which caused a huge water shortage. That was a problem for the military units around, but Wojtek still remained their friend and their unofficial mascot. He officially became part of the unit when they arrived in Egypt where British regulations forbade them to have pets and animal mascots. But the rest of the soldiers found a way to bypass the system. They made Wojtek an official soldier and gave him the rank of private. He even had his own paybook and serial number. According to soldiers, Wojtek helped them in battle, but some people doubt this story. However, there is one verified account from a British soldier who saw a bear helping the Polish troops carry boxes that would normally require four men. Number 3. Lava in a Bucket Being a scientist sounds like a fun job. You get to discover all sorts of amazing things, and if you're good at your field, you might have a breakthrough and have your name remembered for years to come. 
But being a researcher isn't always fun. For instance, geologists sometimes perform dangerous projects like collecting molten rock from a hot active volcano. In this video, you'll see some researchers collecting lava samples. It almost looks as if they're scooping up silvery gooey slime, but just one wrong move and they could end up having massive injuries. That silver stuff right there is around 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, something that you don't ever want to touch. But all this collecting is incredibly worth it. These samples provide a lot of important information about the volcano, which could help experts enhance public safety and decrease the damage of volcanic eruptions. Number 2. Cadaver Synod Cadaver Synod, also known as the Cadaver Trial, is one of the strangest trials in history. Usually, live people show up in court, but in January of 897, the rotting corpse of Pope Formosus was put on trial. I'm not going to go into details, but essentially, Pope John VIII accused Formosus, who was the Bishop of Porto at the time, of violating a law that he did not actually truly violate. Formosus got excommunicated as a punishment, and Pope John VIII continued his role until he died. Many years later, Formosus got the chance to be the Pope himself. However, it seems like eternal peace wasn't possible for him. Years after he died, his corpse was put to stand on trial for the crimes he was excommunicated for when he was still the Bishop of Porto. Of course, the corpse couldn't defend itself anymore. And in the end, Formosus, who was long dead, was found guilty on all counts and was stripped of his vestments. As a bonus, three fingers were also chopped off of his hand. Number 1. Tarar Tarar is one of the most unbelievable people in history. Born circa 1772, Tarar was a French showman and soldier that is most known for his unusual appetite and eating habits. His only motivation for living was to consume a lot of food. What I'm about to tell you might sound like fiction, but trust me, it's not. In his teens, Tarar needed to eat meat every single day just to satiate his appetite. In the 18th century, you couldn't really do that. Meat was incredibly expensive, especially for commoners, and so Tarar was cast out by his parents who gave up on him. From then onwards, he was forced to beg and steal on the streets for food. He also joined a band of thieves until he found a way to eat. He became a showman. Tarar's main act revolved around swallowing all sorts of things on the street. It was said that he ate stones, corks, apples, and even live animals. But it gets more interesting. In 1972, Tarar joined the French Revolutionary Army. He was big, and at first some people thought he would make a good addition to the army. But instead of helping, he collapsed with exhaustion because the military rations weren't enough for him. To get by, Tarar resorted to eating trash. When the senior military surgeons noticed his appetite, they decided to detain him and observe his strange eating habits. He was fed meals that were intended for 15 people, and sometimes his meals included cats, snakes, lizards, and all sorts of live animals. The higher-ups then decided to use his insane appetite to their advantage. Tarar was unknowingly made to eat a hidden letter to be delivered in secret. Sadly, he was captured by the Prussians, and he was later on dumped behind French lines. Tarar was confined shortly in the military hospital, where he begged the doctors to rid him of his extreme hunger. The doctors tried their best to help him, but his hunger continued. It was even said that he was caught trying to eat corpses in the mortuary. Yikes! Tarar was finally kicked out of the hospital when a toddler disappeared and people started to suspect that he was the one responsible for it. He continued to live on until age 26, when he died from tuberculosis. When his body was opened, they found his stomach to be filled with ulcers and pus. No one ever really knew why Tarar always felt extremely hungry, but according to researchers today, he could have been suffering from hyperthyroidism, and his amygdala might have also been damaged, causing his extreme hunger. And that was the life of the hungriest man in the world. So did any of these amaze you? Which one caught your interest the most? And if you have any amazing experiences or fun facts that you'd like to share, make sure to comment them down below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.